more counting atoms in chemical formulas. It's such a useful thing to know how to do. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and quickly run through these first two as a form of review, and then we'll talk about these more complicated cases down here. In chemical formulas and sodium sulfate, this first one here, there's going to be two sodiums, one sulfur, and four oxygens. And we learned how to do the molar mass for, I think, one of this example and maybe both of these examples, at least one of them. Just reviewing, though, two means that the whole thing in parentheses, there are two of. So there are two nitrogens. There are four times two or eight hydrogens, one sulfur, and four oxygens. And while we're here, so uh, we do need sometimes to make um, unit conversions using these numbers. So for part B, for every one ammonium sulfate, there are two nitrogens. And we can also do any of these. Eight hydrogens. And uh, remember division, our word for division is per. So there are one ammonium sulfate per two nitrogens. That's how we would interpret, that's how we would pronounce that unit conversion factor. Same thing here. Now this is a little more complicated formula. We just saw some CH2s in the last lecture video. So this tells me there are six CH2s in here. So there are six carbons and six times two or 12 hydrogens. But we have to add up all of the carbons here. This is going to be, so let's just, so one plus six plus one. So one plus six plus one equals eight carbons. Uh, three plus two times six is 12 plus one is 16 hydrogens. And however you keep track of them is fine, but you're going to be doing molar masses like we did before for increasingly complicated things. And we just wanna have a process for keeping track of things. And so fortunately the oxygens, uh, neither of them are in the parentheses. So it's just two oxygens as well. And here, this one is gonna be magnesium acetate and let's go ahead and do this. We've got, uh, well, that's easy, one magnesium. We've got uh, one plus one times two. So that's two times two, which is four carbons. And we've got three times two. Hmm. I've never done this before, but I like it. <laughs> so. Whatever is in parentheses, add them up. And then the two outside becomes, it looks like a math problem now. So there are six hydrogens. Sometimes you're just doing it and you find a way that makes sense to you that's even new that you haven't seen in the lecture outlines here or at Khan Academy or with your tutor. What's important is it makes sense to you. You can do it, get the right answers. And most importantly, get the right answers on the exams. Now uh, let's move on to types of compounds. Uh, there are two main types. These are ionic compounds. They're made of a cation, which is a positive, which is a word for a positive ion, and an anion, which is a word for a negative ion. And um, cations, which are the positive ions, are always going to be a metal ion. or, there has to be one exception, NH4+, plus, which is ammonium. And NH4+, plus is made out of non-metals, as we talked about. 
that and if you look on the periodic table uh, so but it is a very common uh, cation that is not made of metal so and this is going to be your best way of telling an ionic compound from a covalent compound is look for the metal and I should say metal ion it'll show up in the formula as a metal though um, anion is going to be a non-metal ion all right what I'll say is a non-metal monatomic ion or a polyatomic ion and the polyatomic ions are actually also made out of non-metals so they're going to be non-metals for you um, as an example so a simple example would just be sodium chloride table salt sodium is a metal we look in the periodic table for our metals we remember that anything to the left of this shaded area is a metal. You've got lots of choices. Sodium is definitely way to the left of that line. It is a metal. Um, so another example. Ooh. Mm, let's change that to a three. Ammonium phosphate. Ammonium is our positive ion phosphate is a polyatomic ion oh i forgot to mention that chloride cl is a monatomic ion as well and our third note here is that ionic compounds are not molecules and i'm i'll tell you what they are well i'll just tell you what they are they're not molecules they are formula units which is, believe it or not, abbreviated FU for formula units. But if we think about sodium chloride, for example, we might draw a picture like this. And, you can, and then this is the 3D unit cell, so it's even more complicated. You can see the 3D nature of the sodium and the chloride ions around it. And truly, the ions go on forever. So... This term formula unit stands for the fact that the simplest thing is NaCl. It's almost like an empirical formula for an ionic compound. Because really, we could draw NaCl just here. This is also NaCl, and this is also NaCl. So NaCl is just the simplest version of a complex compound here. So I don't know, so sodium chloride, technically they're formula units, not molecules. If you call them molecules, it's okay, but as you move on, the term formula units is a good way to go for ionic compounds. Look for the metal. Uh, covalent or molecular, those are the other type of compounds, and there's only two <laughs> in this course anyway. The covalent bonds hold atoms together as one molecule, and uh, together as one molecule, and they can also be uh, polyatomic ions as well. Covalent bonds are in polyatomic ions too, and one. So covalent or molecular compounds are made of nonmetals. Um, and examples are going to be things like oxygen, O2, CH4, that's a 4, I apologize there, uh, which we call methane, and uh, SO4, 2 minus. So this is a polyatomic ion, still nonmetals. There are covalent bonds in here as well. And so these are three examples of, and um, 
if we were to draw solid O2, which would be O2 with an S after it, what we would draw is we would actually, well, again, I'm going to have to go back to my Lewis structures here, but we would draw a molecule that's like this, and the smallest part of O2 solid would be that. So a sol it would look like a whole bunch of O2 molecules. And they should be perfect, but we're doing our best here. And it would go on forever. Each of these is an O2. And so the smallest part of a covalent compound is the molecule, it is a molecule. Whereas the smallest part of the ionic compound, the particles, if you will, are ions. There's two different kinds of ions here in solid sodium chloride. Ooh, come back here. There's only one, one part here. And so that's a huge difference for ionic compounds versus covalent compounds. Best way to tell ionic compounds from covalent compounds, look for the metal. Metal. Right, I feel like I'm saying, look for the metal. Or ammonium. Well, it still gets an exclamation point because I still think it's the best way to do it.